Chapter 13 The night had grown warmer and steamier. As I crept out the door, I felt as if I was stepping into a hot shower. A mosquito buzzed around my head. I tried to clap it between my hands. Missed. Jan, Ivy, and I edged our way around the side of the building. My shoes slit on the dew-wet grass. Bright spotlights shone down from the trees, lighting the path. We crept in the shadows. Where should we look first? Ivy whispered. Let's start at the lodge, I suggested. Maybe I'll turn this winter some partying there. I don't hear any partying, Jan whispered. It's so quiet out here. She was right. The only sounds I could hear were the steady chirp of crickets and the whisper of the warm wind through the trees. Keeping in the shadows, we followed the path toward the lodge. We passed the swimming pool, empty and silent. The waters shimmered like silver under bright spotlights. It was such a hot, wet night. I imagined myself jumping into the pool with all my clothes on. But we were on a mission to find Deirdre. No time to think about late night swims. Staying close together, we passed a row of ping pong tables. It made me think about Elliot. I wonder what he was doing. Probably tucked into bed, like any sensible person. We were approaching the first row of tennis courts when Ivy suddenly cried out, Whoa! Get back! She grabbed me and shoved me hard against the fence. I heard soft footsteps on the path. Someone humming. The three of us held our breath as a counselor walked past. He had curly black hair and wore dark blue sunglasses even though it was night. He wore a white t-shirt and white shorts that made up the counselor's uniform. We pressed our backs against the tennis court fence. That's Billy, Jen whispered. He's kind of cute. He's always so happy. He won't be too happy if he catches us, Ivy whispered. We'll be in major trouble. Humming to himself, snapping his fingers, Billy walked past us. The path curved around the other side of the tennis courts. I watched him until he disappeared. I took a deep breath. I hadn't been breathing this whole time. Where is he going? Ivy wondered. Maybe he's going to the party at the lodge, I suggested. Why don't we ask him? Jan joked. For sure, I muttered. We checked out the path in both directions. Then we started walking again. We made our way past the tennis courts. The spotlights in the trees cast long shadows across the path. The shadows shifted and moved as the trees limbed bob in the wind. They looked like dark creatures crawling and swivering over the ground. Despite the heat of the night, I shivered. It was kind of creepy walking over these moving shadows. I had the feeling one of them might reach up, grab me, and pull me down. Weird thought, huh? I turned back in time to see the lights in the door window start to go out. Lights out. I tapped Jen on the shoulder. She turned and watched the dorm. Two. As the lights all went out, the building seemed to disappear in front of our eyes. It faded into the black of the night sky. M maybe this wasn't such a good idea, I whispered. Ivy didn't reply. She bit her lower lip. Her eyes went darting around the darkness. Jan laughed. <laughs> Don't wimp out now, she scolded. We're almost to the lodge. We cut through the soccer field. The main lodge stood on a low, sloping hill, hidden by white old maple and oak trees. We didn't have to climb very far up the hill to see the lodge was as dark as a dorm. No party up there, I whispered. Ivy sighed, disappointed. Well, where could the hatred be? We could try the boys' storm, I joked. They both laughed. Our laughter was cut short by a loud, fluttering sound very close by. What's that? Ivy cried. Oh! I let out a low moan as I raised my eyes and saw them. The sky was thick with bats. Dozens of black bats. Floating over the spotlights in the old trees. And then, swooping down to get us.